So we've already talked about contract damages. Contract damages can come from the breach of, a, of an insurance policy. But here, if the insurance company acted unreasonably, unreasonably, then and only then can the company be held liable for bad faith. So that's the test. It's did the insurance company act unreasonably? And we look to determine whether or not under the facts and circumstances they violated the law, they violated custom and practice, and somehow they did something which leads to this breach of the implied covenant. If an insurance company is found to have breached an implied covenant, all losses resulting from that breach can be recovered by the policyholder. Economic losses, additional costs and expenses that the insured had to go through, attorney's fees, costs and expenses can be paid and awarded to a policyholder, and emotional distress or what a policyholder has to go through getting his or her insurance company to pay the claim, but it has to be a natural person. So corporations, of course, can't have emotional distress, but policyholders, individuals can have emotional distress. And in insurance bad faith cases, we're looking for what harm the insurance company did to the policyholder. What happened as a result of the insurance company failing to pay a claim? And what was the result in harm or damage to these, to these policyholders? And we constantly look for that kind of evidence to determine. So the insurance company has to act unreasonably. They have to have breached a contract, and there has to be damages as a result of the breach of the implied covenant of good faith and fair dealing. The final area of damages that can be recovered from an insurance company who acts in bad faith and who mistreats an insured are punitive damages. But punitive damages are rare. First, they're limited to circumstances where the evidence is very clear and convincing. That's the standard. The, damage, the evidence of an insurance company's conduct has to be clear and convincing that they acted not only in bad faith, but with fraud, oppression, or malice. And that's the standard. And if that occurs, then juries can award punitive damages. What are punitive damages? They're damages that are designed to punish an insurance company, to make an example of an insurance company. So not only does the insurance company learn a lesson from mishandling this claim because they have to pay punitive damages, but they're taught in the future not to mishandle claims again. And it has an industry-wide effect because punitive damages are generally felt in the industry as a standard of what you can and can't do and how insurance companies can and can't act. What is an insurance company supposed to do during the handling of a claim and what are the telltale signs for whether or not the insurance company is acting in bad faith? Well, an insurance company has a non-delegable obligation to thoroughly investigate a claim. That means that they can't require their policyholder to pay to investigate their own claim. That means that they can't ignore their policyholder. That means that they have to work with their insured to determine whether or not there's a valid claim. They have to constantly communicate with their insured. They have to make certain that the insured is fully informed of what's happening during the process of a claim. So insurance companies who generally act in bad faith are not being responsive, not investigating the claim. And one of the tenets of insurance claims handling practices is incredibly important to understand is that an insurance company not only has to thoroughly investigate a claim, but it has to look for every possible reason that a claim should be paid. It can't look for ways to get out of a claim. So when you see telltale signs of an insurance company looking for excuses, of not responding to the insured, of acting counter to the insured's interests, these are telltale signs of an insurance company that's violating its obligations and potentially acting in bad faith.